In last video, I showed you a way to build a mobile application using SAP AppGyver and NoSQL database, which is a Google Firebase. So in this video, I, I will show you a way to integrate sign up process or user registration process in SAP AppGyver. So I will use the visitor log application, which we built in the last uh, video. Now, to start with, if I go to my pages here, I have Firebase authentication uh, page, and this was uh, generated when we activated authentication, and then I selected uh, uh, Google Firebase as the uh, authentication engine. So this comes pre-generated template. Uh, one of the thing I want to change is here the placeholder says type here. I don't really like that way, so I will say email. Uh, the password I will change it to password. And then I'm going to remove the labels. I don't really like labels. Just place, placeholder should be enough. Okay. Now we have a login uh, button here, but we are going to integrate the sign up process. So we need an additional action handler, which is a button. So let's put another button here. Bring it there. Uh, since it is, uh, since the button is not in the container, so we will use the row container. We can put them beside each other. Then put the button in the cells, corresponding cells. So they are side by side. Now typically login is uh, in a green color. So let's change that. And sign up doesn't really have any specific color. So let me uh, pick, let's pick the the orange so let's select that and then we will go edit and select like yeah and then the text uh, let's keep it white okay okay and then we'll change this label to sign up Sign up or register or create user, you name whatever you would like to. So this is the UI aspect. We have action. Now the next, and, and one more thing we need to do here is uh, when we tap on sign up, we should be redirected to, to a page where user, where you, you know, a user, possibly user, can enter email ID and a password. So we need a new page. So let's create a new page. Let's call create users or sign up okay so uh, we don't need this these defaults bare minimum we need two fields email id and a password that's all we need to create user in a firebase let's get two fields and let's Put, um, update the uh, label and a placeholder so email and a password we did not create any variables we did not submit anything we did not link anything and we should have a another button here to submit and again that's color change color to green Okay, so we have a page, we have a button, and we can link our page with this uh, action or the button. So select that, go in here, say open page, and then link it. And then in the page, we select sign up page and save. And save. So now if we tap on sign up, it will bring us on the create user or sign up page. Now, uh, we will link that form with the backend for that we have to create we have to use google api and i will leave a link down below in the description this is the reference documentation for uh, api and one of the section in the api is this one which allows us to create users or to sign up users so let's add this as a resource so we'll go back to our uh, data section here and then we'll add uh, rest api integration 
resource ID, let's say, uh, I think sign up. I think it doesn't really matter what we name. Uh, sign up users. And then the end point is this V1. So that's our end point. Then uh, if you see in the API, there is a query as a key. So we need to pass a key to authenticate. So uh, the request is pre-authenticated to register users. So we need a key. So let's go back again here and we'll add query parameter as key. Key is key. And uh, this value, you can get it from your, Fire, uh, from your uh, Firebase console. You go to the project overview here, go to project settings, and right here on the top, uh, you see web API key. This is the key we need. So in here, you, we need to enter that key. Uh, okay, so let me enter that key in here and save. Now, since we are creating a record, we will add only create or a post method here. We'll enable this, the path, uh, which we have it in an API is accounts and a sign up. So we'll use that as is. Accounts and a sign up. And uh, what else we have? Uh, pretty much that's it and then well, we need to create a schema for request and a response since we don't have any reference we cannot really test so we have to use a custom schema and then we add a few properties the properties are here so this api has everything you need this requires email password and return secure token only three properties so let's put those here email, password, and return secure token. Okay, so this is a request payload or a structure. And then we also have to change the response. This is a simple example. I'm not going to use response for anything, but just to have request and a response uh, aligned with the API, I will create. Here you can see this is the response. That's the request body. So let's add, uh, I think there are five properties. One, two, three, four, five, five. And then we'll update those here. Token ID email once you register yourself system will return a token and you can use that token uh, token to authenticate the user so they don't have to re-log in but i'm not going to cover that part so refresh token is there then next is expires in and local ID. Save. So we have our schema, uh, the request body and a response body. And this is only for create record, which, uh, which will trigger on creation, on sign up. So now we have our a data source now we'll go back to our ui uh, and specifically to the sign up page and in here on submit we will create a record so on select submit go down here and use the create record uh, from a data section map this and then uh, obviously I, we did not add data variable so let's go to data variables and then add uh, sign up users data variable here and select uh, new data record only because we are not fetching anything and then we, under submit create select 
the sign up users as a data variable. However, we just map the uh, source resource uh, the source uh, uh, API. We did not pass anything. We did not pass the uh, request. Uh, we did not populate anything in the request body, or even we did not capture anything from a response, because these uh, fields they are not mapped anywhere. And to do that, we'll create two more variables here. Uh, we can create page variables to limit the scope within the page. Uh, one we will call uh, email, and another is just password. Save, and then we uh, will we will map these respective fields. So data variables, page variables, email, and password is data variable, page variable, password, and save. Now, if we go to uh, create record, we can uh, populate the uh, uh, payload or the request body. Select this record properties, select the object with properties, and then select email. Go to data variables, page variables, email, and same thing for password. Page variables, password. And the secure token, we can have a, a static value supposed to be true always so save and save okay so this should create a record and then we can add messages so the port one shows success and port two is uh, will trigger if there's an error so we can add respective error messages success or error message so user created successfully an error occurred during user creation and save okay so we linked our uh, api with variables we link that uh, form with the submit button action now we can test. Oh, there's one more thing. So this is a password field. So you can, within the properties of the field, you can go down there and I think somewhere here, it says, yeah, password input, uh, turn on, uh, change it to true because this is a password field. And the other thing is, even though we created this page, this, whenever you create a, any page, new page uh, in, a, in AppGyver, and if you have authentication set up, by default, that page is protected under authentication. So you cannot directly access that without getting authenticated, authenticated yourself. But there's a property in the page which you can actually make it uh, accessible without authentication. So in here, uh, advanced properties. So select the page down, down in here and then go uh, to advanced properties and here it says allow page to be opened without authentication so this is not in the scope of authentication any user can access this page they don't have to really sign in because idea is to create a user not to sign in and then give them a way to create a user so we'll turn on that so this is accessible and now we can test so let's go back to our uh, launch open preview visitor log and here i have a sign up page and in here, uh, let me put my name, my local domain, and my super secure password and submit. So it says user created successfully. Now, if I go to uh, back to the console and under authentication, we should have a user here. So there, there you go, we have a user. Now we can use this user to log in. I did not set up any, technically it should go back, the navigation should uh, kick in on success and it should return back to the original page on a sign up page. So let's fix that and then uh, we'll rerun and use that user ID to log in. So on submit, raise a success message and then navigate back to the original page. So let's bind this navigate back flow function and save. And now we can use our uh, ID. The user id which we just created you know earlier and my super secure password and login and there we go 
we have a login. So this is how you can integrate user registration process in, uh, in your application if you're using Firebase as a backend engine.